guy again, Adam here. Um, so this is part of my ongoing series about finding my next favorite TTRPG. Not that there necessarily has to be just one, but I want sort of a default, one that I go back to, one that I set most of my campaigns in. Um, I've decided to move away from Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and not go back to any game systems that I've played in the past. So I'm trying to find something new to me, my next favorite one. And I've um, come up with seven things that I would like my new system to have. So we'll get to Tales of the Valiant by Cobalt Press in this video, but I wanted to preface it by giving you the baseline of what I want. Number one, my new system has to have the ability to sustain long campaigns, to have these long narrative arcs. Um, it's got to have complexity that is less than D&D 5th edition. I've said before that it should be somewhere between Dungeon World, which I once played a while back, and D&D 5e. So it's got to be somewhere between there. Um, it's got to be able to support a fantasy setting. Um, it has to have a streamlined combat system. I don't want initiative rolls. I don't want attack and damage rolls to be separate. It's got to root out bioessentialism as much as possible. It would be nice to have um, social combat, uh, some sort of system that uh, resolves disputes that are not combat. And um, I've added this one since my last video um, as a result of having someone comment to me that I should check out Kids on Bikes. And I did, I checked it out, but I was like, it doesn't really work because I also want um, something that's not just a niche, a niche or niche default setting. Um, I want it to be able to support um, lots of different styles of fantasy play, um, lots of fantasy subgenres. So if it's Kids on Bikes seems like it's oriented toward like... It reminds me of E.T. or Stranger Things, um, where something mysterious or frightening is happening in this community, and you're a kid with powers of some sort of powers to help overcome that. Um, I really, really think that would be great. That sounds like a ton of fun for a one-shot uh, or very short campaign, but I know that I would quickly grow tired of it if I were playing it again and again and again. And I also don't have the money to invest in lots and lots and lots of different fantasy games. Um, maybe once I'm wealthy, right? When we, when all my stuff takes off. <laughs> Who knows when that'll be? Um, so anyway, so I'm looking at Tales of the Valiant. This was one of the first ones to be announced after the um, open game license fiasco in January 2023. Um and kudos to them. They immediately announced, almost immediately announced, we're going to make this game. Um, it's going to... And I think that they very much tried to remake D&D 5th Edition in their own way. So Cobalt Press has been putting out... Um, what do they call them? Tome of Monsters or something? Something? Monster Tomes? Tome of something. Anyway, and I've... And so they've been getting very, very good at making 5th edition monsters um, to the point where I think their design rivals Watsi's designs of their own editions monsters, um, which is great. And, and so um, I think they're well positioned to make their own system. Um, for me, this one is a little bit too close to D&D 5th edition for it to be my next RPG. So the quest continues, and I'll, t I'll go into that in more detail. Um, ability scores and modifiers, This is be those being two different things, that's very vestigial. It comes because it was required in previous editions of the game, and it just really doesn't need to be there. There's no reason why you can't just have an ability score of negative one that al also functions as your modifier 
or an ability sco score of plus two that also also functions as your modifier. That should totally be doable. Um, they also have, I mean, a lot. If you look at this it, it, at first glance, it just looks like D and D fifth edition. Um, they're in one of their preview documents. They had a cleric, fighter, rogue, and wizard. Very much D and D classes. They have classes that who that go up in level. That have hit points, proficiency, starting equipment. Like it looks like D and D fifth edition, um, with sort of a different um, layout designer. <laughs> Um, at first glance, um, there are a couple of different things, um, but in a lot of ways, this is just a tweak, right? I could see this being, um, <clears throat> if you didn't tell me that this wasn't WotC, I might consider this, I might just assume that this is the 2024 update, um, that WotC is doing. So, um, what else could I say? I did really, really like the fact that um, they separated lineage and heritage. Um, so that replaces D&D's race, which I think is a loaded term that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Um, and they replaced that with lineage and heritage. And lineage is your biological traits that you get for being an elf or a dwarf or a human. Um, but it it kind of stops mostly at biological. There are a couple of exceptions where I'm like, eh, you didn't need to put that in. But mostly it's just biological traits, especially when you look at the mechanics. Um, and then heritage is your culture, um, which isn't necessarily tied to your lineage. You could have an elf lineage and a cosmopolitan heritage, or an elf or a dwarf lineage and a nomadic heritage, right? Um... And I think all that's good. I, I take issue with some of the flavor text. Um, e if you look at the stone heritage, stone heritage characters were raised with the values and traditions of the stone dwarven clans. So already it feels like they're artificially tying those together when that doesn't necessarily need to happen. You could be the third descendant of a group of human miners, and I think you could take that. And you, we, you wouldn't need to talk about the dwarven clans. So, um, yeah, so I really like that. And I like that spell casting, you don't have spell levels, you have spell rings or spell circles, something like that. Um, because there are just too many levels, the word level is overused for different things in um, D&D 5th edition, which I think is confusing. Um, you've got spell lists, so again, this is very much like D&D 5th edition. Um, monsters are called monsters, even though I think some of them are not monstrous. Like a goblin is just a person with green skin who is short and has green eyes, apparently, in this edition. Um, and this is where I kind of take issue. And I've written in their in their playtest um, feedback that I didn't like these things. Let me read the goblin entry. It says, Though often considered the lowest of sneaks and thieves, goblins largely ignore what others think of them, stubbornly prospering in areas disregarded by civilization and completing tasks that others disdain. Fortunately, a goblin can find joy almost anywhere. So we're already making some really broad assumptions about goblins. Um, and then this part I didn't like. Goblin culture considers stealing a delightful challenge. So this is a monoculture, right? All goblins right they're part of the goblin culture and their goblin culture says stealing is a delightful challenge i don't think that needs to be there i think there could be so many goblin cultures and some of them very distinct from each other um and then of course outlier individuals within each culture that don't really match the culture they're born in right um i don't i think that any sentient especially humanoid creature who has free will should be able to chart their own course, right? And once they spread out over a geographical area, multiple cultures will spring up. Um, I think that's just how, that's how it would play out. And uh, I want a fantasy game that reflects that. So it's a little bit too close to D&D 5th edition. I appreciate what Cobalt Press is trying to do, but it's not for me, at least not in the playtest documents I've seen so far. So my search continues.